الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله الحمد لله عز وجل Dear viewers of Madani Channel Another beautiful episode with a wonderful story from the Holy Quran. Yes, we are watching. Let's listen to a story from the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. Every episode, we have some unique lessons from the Holy Quran. Undoubtedly, each word, each letter, each page, each ruku, each surah, each para of the Holy Quran is full of barakat is full of blessings alhamdulillah azza wa jal we try to learn few morals from different different stories of the holy quran in every episode alhamdulillah azza wa jal we have discussed few stories already we have tried to learn few pearls of wisdom from those stories and inshallah azza wa jal today as well we have a very unique a very wonderful story from the holy quran inshallah azza wa jal make intention that you will listen to this wonderful story of the Holy Quran with full attention inshallah and also make intention that you will try to remember the points discussed and you will also try to convey it wherever possible to others as well. Call your children together, call the household members together and let's listen to a story from the Holy Quran. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, the one who recites durood, salawat upon me once, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descends 10 mercies upon him, erases 10 of his sins and elevates his station by 10 ranks. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. So today's story is Allahu Akbar regarding a battlefield actually, yeah. An event which took place in the past. And what a remarkable event and what a remarkable incident with so many lessons for us, Allahu Akbar. This was actually the Battle of Badr. And it is the most famous battle between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. This battle took place in Badr, a place called Badr. Where is this place? A place between Makkah al Mukarramah and Madinah al Munawwara. And when was it? What date was it when the battle took place? It was the 17th of Ramadan. Yes, 17th of Ramadan of 2nd Hijri. As regards to the weapons and soldiers, the Muslim army was weaker significantly. The number of the Muslim soldiers upholding the noble flag of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was just 313. That too consisting of young people as well and old people as well. Allahu Akbar. Amongst the Ansar and Muhajireen, there were youngsters, small ones and elderly ones as well. They were part of this army of the Muslims. The Muslim army had only six armors and eight swords. Allah, only six armors and eight swords. Whereas the unbelievers army was comprised of almost 1,000 furious and strong warriors. And these warriors were armed with 100 excellent horses, even 100 camels and dangerous weapons. Allahu Akbar. Imagine, just, just try to comprehend the situation. 313 Muslims against an army having a thousand men equipped with horses, transportation in form of horses and camels. They have swords, dangerous weapons, 
and the Muslims have eight weapons. Just, just eight weapons to confront an army of approximately 1,000 people. Just few armors. That's it. And quantity as well. Just look at the figure. 1,313. Very big gap. And those 313 also consisting on elderly ones and the young ones. Allahu Akbar. In front of such a huge military power of the unbelievers. Unrest and anxiety amongst the Muslims was a natural element. Our beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam spent the whole night in salah and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh Allah azza wa jal, if this small number of people is killed, then no one will be left on the face of earth to worship you till the day of judgment. During this application, during this dua, the sacred shawl fell down from the blessed shoulders of our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And due to overwhelming emotions, the blessed tears welled up when the companion of the cave, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first Khalifa of Islam, the beloved companion of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, saw him in such state of anxiety. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu became worried. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu lifted up the fallen shawl, placed it over the sacred shoulders of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, held the blessed hand and consoled him in a very sympathetic tone. Allahu Akbar with great honor, respect, reverence and said to the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not worry. Ya Rasulullah, do not worry. Surely Allah will fulfill his promise. Our beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam stopped supplicating on the request of his most loyal devotee Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and invoked, recited an ayah from the Holy Quran. Allahu Akbar. Let's listen to that beautiful ayah of the Holy Quran which became a conviction and a determination. And Allahu Akbar, what were the results of such dua coming from the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam? This dua is mentioned in Surah Al-Qamar, verse number 45. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Sayyuhzamul jamu'u wa yuwalluna dubr. Allahu Akbar. Translation from Kanzul Iman. The group will soon be chased away and they will turn their backs to flee, to run away. Allahu Akbar. In the morning, the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam delivered such an encouraging and stimulating sermon by reciting the ayahs of battle that it stirred each and every drop of blood of all the volunteers with emotions. The beloved and blessed Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam also expressed his knowledge of the unseen and delivered the glad tidings that if you people would stay in the battlefield with patience, with Patience, Allah Azza wa Jal will descend the angels' army from the skies to support you. Allahu Akbar. Therefore, an army of 5,000 angels descended in the battlefield. The scenario of the battlefield had changed. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem was holding the flag of the Muhajireen and Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the flag bearer of the Ansar. Seventy unbelievers were killed and seventy were arrested and the remaining ran off from the battlefield leaving their positions behind. All the prominent war chiefs of Quraysh were killed among the Muslims. There were 14 fortunate Muslims who embraced the rank of Shahadat. They embraced the rank of martyrdom. And among these martyrs, there were six Muhajireen and eight Ansar. The Muslims who won a huge amount of war spoils that was left behind by the defeated army. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the Battle of Badr and the army of angels 
in such beautiful words in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Ali Imran, verses 123 to 126, subhanallah azza wa jal. <laughs> إذ تقول للمؤمنين ألن يكفيكم أن يمدكم ربكم بثلاثة آلاف من الملائكة أن يمدكم ربكم بثلاثة آلاف من الملائكة بَلَا إِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا وَيَأْتُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْرِهِمْ هَذَا يُمْدِدُكُمْ هَذَا يُمْدِدُكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِخَمْسَةِ آلَافٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُسَوِّمِينَ وما جعله الله إلا بشرى لكم ولتطمئن قلوبكم به وما النصر إلا من عند الله العزيز الحكيم Translation from Kanzul Iman and Allah Azza wa Jal indeed helped you at the battle of Badr when you were completely without resources. So fear Allah that you may be thankful. Remember when you, O oh beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, were saying to the believers, is it not sufficient for you that your Lord may support you by sending down 3,000 angels? Yes, why not? If you display patience and piety and the disbelievers attack you suddenly, your Lord will send down 5,000 distinctively marked angels to help you. And Allah Azza wa Jal did not grant this victory except for your pleasure and only in order that your hearts may attain satisfaction with it. And there is no help except from Allah the overpowering, the wise, Allahu Akbar, such beautifully. The whole incident has been mentioned in the Holy Quran and undoubtedly there are so many things in this incident, in this event, in this story from the Holy Quran for us to learn from, for us to pick up from. Indeed, there is a lot. What do we learn? Allahu Akbar, that despite having less soldiers, and less armory, the Muslims became victorious in the Battle of Badr. From this, we learn the moral lesson that success is not dependent upon the magnitude of army and ammunition. Instead, it depends upon the divine help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because whenever He Azza wa Jal wills, He Azza wa Jal helps the Muslims by sending army of angels in the battlefield. And despite being less in number, despite being less in the army, despite being less in manpower and military equipment and resources, they still become victorious and defeat the enemy's army. However, for such success and divine support, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned two conditions. For such divine support, there have to be two conditions. Number one is patience. There has to be sabr. One should be patient upon the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One should stand firm but should have patience. You should have sabr. And secondly is piety. Person should be pious. He should be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with sabr and with taqwa, with piety and with patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall descend help in such manners which we cannot even Imagine. So if the Muslims show steadfastness in the battlefield, observing stern faith in the divine support from Allah Azza wa Jal and keep hold of patience and piety, then victory will embrace them on every frontier and the unbelievers will surrender and run away from the battlefield or will face death and suffer the eternal fire. 
one most essential thing in such conditions is that a Muslim should show preservance like that of a mountain. He should be firm like a mountain in the battlefield by observing piety and by observing patience and should never pay heed towards the numeral shortage or plenty of war ammunition because Allah Azza wa Jal has clearly said about this in the Holy Quran that what success lies in, what is true help, who is the real helper. Allah Ta'ala has said, وَمَن نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ and there is no help except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some poet has mentioned similar thing in the following couplet, Allahu Akbar. An unbeliever has sole belief in the power of his sword, while a true believer fights even without a sword. Meaning our trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be such firm, it should be so strong. We should know that my Rabb is seeing in what situation I am. Now those two points, those two conditions which are required and which need our attention, sabr and piety, taqwa. These two points are very important. In the days of Ramadan, in the nights of Ramadan, let's think about it. It may be very tough to fast. It may be very tough to stand at night for prayer. For Taraweeh, very tough to wake up for Fajr, very tough to be obedient to the parents at times. Maybe they're shouting or maybe they're refusing from doing something. You know, many such situations. Maybe it is tough to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we observe patience and we do the act of piety. We fight ourselves, our inner self, the inner self, the nafs might tell us that no, your wealth will become short. No, you won't get enough time to sleep. No, how can you, you know, do whatever the parents say? Don't you have your own life? Don't you have this? Don't you have that? You're a big man now. No, we should fight our inner self. Our fight is with shaitan. We need to fight him. We need to make sure that we fight our nafs. And how will that happen? Two elements mentioned to us in the Holy Quran. That these two conditions, if they meet, inshallah, azza wa jal, there will be help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There shall be divine support in unexpected manners, inshallah ta'ala. We will feel the sweetness in our ibadat. We will see that our matters are getting sorted out very quickly and very swiftly. They are being done like without any effort or something. It will be so smooth, inshallah ta'ala. What's needed? Sabr and taqwa patience and piety obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's take this message today and let's try to teach others as well about being patient upon whatever situation we may be in now you know sometimes it comes and it happens at times that situations are such it is very hard to do something for example somebody has died a close relative has died maybe a father has lost a son Maybe a son has lost a father, a brother has lost a brother. Maybe a situation like this and, you know, the person is crying, moaning, shouting, complaining. Of course, sadness is there. Tears will start flowing. The heart will be drowning in sadness. A person's emotions will be shattered. It's like the heart is broken. You know, it may feel like the world has fallen upon you. Yes, that will be there. But that's when the test comes. That's when the time comes that we have to stand firm and make sabr. Sadness will be there. But why should we lose the reward which we are able to attain by doing sabr? Why should we lose that? But what happens is a person will say all sorts of words. A person will do all sorts of things. Why me and why did it have to happen and this and that? A person will you know, blast out and say all those things. And at the end, he'll say that I have nothing but to do sabr. So brother, at the very first place, if you had done sabr, you wouldn't lose out on the reward, on the thawab of sabr. But now after we have mentioned all those complaining words, all those words which may be unfit to be used in those certain moments and situations, we may have used all those. In fact, certain words are so dangerous, they can risk a person's iman as well. 
A person is in such a situation, he is basically out of his senses and he's not realizing what am I saying, but it can be dangerous. So we have to stand firm. Sadness will be there naturally, but patience will grant us reward upon that, inshallah. And along with that is piety. Any situation, any temptation from shaitan, from nafs, we need to make sure that we stay firm in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how much attractive a sin may look to us, no matter how beautiful shape a sin may come to us, but no, I fear Allah ta'ala. That's, you know, the mindset we should have. No, I fear Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala has ordered me to do this. I will do it no matter what. Allah Ta'ala has refused. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded not to do this. I will remain away from it. Inshallah, by doing this, we will feel the sweetness in our Iman. We will feel the sweetness when we do sajda to Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we bow down our heads in sajda to the Lord of the whole universe, we will feel the sweetness within us. We will feel the flavor of Iman. What's needed is the dedication, is the sincerity that I have to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, when sabr is there, shukr is there, thankfulness to Allah ta'ala, and piety is there. Inshallah, azawajal, every battle of our life, whether that battle is in terms of attaining peace in heart, whether that battle is in terms of establishing a business or something, whether that battle is in terms of fighting the inner shaitan, inner self, the shaitan who keeps on whispering us, whether that battle is in worldly affairs, whether that battle is in terms of striving to do good deeds, Allah Ta'ala will help us, inshallah, to learn more beautiful things like that, to listen to more stories from the Holy Quran. Keep watching. Silsila. Let's listen to a story from the Holy Quran. We listen to numerous stories from the Holy Quran and try to learn things from that. Like today we learned. Teach it to others as well. So likewise in the next episode, we will come with another story from the Holy Quran. There are other so many beautiful silsilas on Madani channel. To watch Madani channel, make sure that, you know, with that remote of yours, you don't go here and there anywhere. Stay tuned to Madani channel, inshallah ta'ala, because no matter you are right, you go left. There is no guarantee, but Madani channel is guaranteed that inshallah you will learn something. You will be benefiting. You will be increasing in your knowledge. You will be attaining thawab by watching this TV screen of yours. Yes, because you are listening regarding Allah and His beloved ones. May Allah Ta'ala grant us the ability to learn from the Holy Quran. May we become the true followers of the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And may our hearts shine and be illuminated with the Noor and the light of the Holy Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Quran, Quran, Quran. Listen to a story from the Quran. Let's listen to a story from the Quran. Let's listen to a story from the Quran. Let's listen to a story from the Quran.